Okay, my name is Trevor Pryor, I'm a consultant podiatric surgeon and, and the aim of this video is to cover some of the principles for taking a cast. Obviously when we want to make a precision orthosis, a custom orthosis such as pod foam, and we need to get an accurate impression of the foot and one of the secrets is to try and make that as repeatable, as reliable as possible. So we're going to just talk through some of those concepts. There are a couple of ways that uh, you can take the cast, obviously with the patient supine like this there is something called the suspension technique that uses the weight of the foot and the leg to help lock the foot into position. But that can actually be quite uh, strenuous for somebody to undertake, so we sort of get lazy and, and cheat a bit. So in this position we're able to take almost like a reverse suspension technique and we're going to use uh, the fourth and fifth toes where I can distract and plant a flex and then go to resistance. If I try and go too far, the toes will start to dorsiflex, so it's quite a nice controlling position to lock out the mid-tarsal joint. It's quite common for people to use uh, the thumb on the fourth and fifth met heads to do the same, but I quite often see people um, putting too much pressure on there, and obviously you get an indentation on the plaster cast, um, which can sometimes uh, skew uh, the, the, the quality of the cast. Um, in order to try and standardise the position, uh, we're moving away from uh, root weed and Ryan's sub tailor neutral position. Uh, you can feel for uh, the head of the talus to try and get that consistent. What we tend to do is to flex the uh, uh, opposite knee and leg, rotate the leg until the malleoli axis is parallel with the floor, where we can lock the foot into a fairly repeatable position. Uh, other considerations when we're preparing is whether or not we want to make any skin markings uh, so they come out on the cast for the benefit of the lab and that might be for something such as where uh, the key pain is for plantar heel pain um, if someone's got a particularly tight fascia so we want to mark the fascia for a fascial groove um, if they have pain beneath the ball of the foot and we want to have a redistributive pad so we locate where the pain was and in some of the orthoses like Podfo, they have a progressive flex, which is where the um, uh, flexibility of the device uh, changes between the thickness of it. So you can have rigid in one point, flexible in another point. So it gives you uh, a bit more variation of how the orthosis works. One final consideration is whether or not we want to correct the foot position at all. So if we have somebody whose forefoot's inverted, for instance, which may be flexible, what we can do when we take the cast is to use uh, Hallett's dorsiflexion and pressure onto the midfoot to correct out any inversion so that now the uh, arch of the uh, cast and therefore the orthoses automatically captures the position that relates to the mobility of the foot and we're going to do that in this particular instance. In some instances if you have someone with a very rigid flat foot you may even consider taking a pronated cast but and that's much less common. The next stage is uh, preparing the plaster of Paris material and different people have uh, different techniques. I'm going to show you the, the, the technique I've used for a number of years. I tend to use uh, three layers of plaster of Paris and my markings for length go from uh, the distal aspect of the hallux to the fifth metatarsal and so it goes all the way around the foot in, in one go. Uh, one of the problems that you can get when you take a cast like this is as you fold the material it creases uh, which can affect the quality of the inside of the cast. So a uh, little technique that we do is to cut the plaster of Paris material at this point and you can either do that before you cast or you can do it after you've put the, the wet plaster of Paris on. Um, if you do it before when you're trying to remove um, all of the excess water that can be a bit trickier so we'll show you how to do it once the plaster of Paris is, is on the foot. Um, the other aspect to consider is where the plaster of Paris crosses over underneath the foot and what I tend to do with that is to have one thickness all the way over the sole of the foot and then fold across and I'll show you how we do that. That way we don't get a, a line of the junction with the plaster of Paris um, in the middle of the cast. So let's get ready to do this cast, it's always the nice messy bit and I tend to use my fingers to uh, keep a, a, a couple of layers of the plaster. So we're going to get that nice and wet in there. What I'm now going to do is to place that over the foot using my original dimensions. I'm then going to take my scissors and cut straight up to the heel. I can fold that away and now you'll see I can bring this bit of plaster of Paris all the way around so it makes one contact with the foot. I can then bring my 
lateral piece back round to cross over. It's quite nice if you can capture the lateral malleolus. Some of the labs like to use that as part of their balancing technique. And what I tend to do then is to just fold down slightly so that it gives a little bit of resistance and support to the plaster of Paris. So I'm now going to smooth that over. You can see I've got plenty of time to work with this. I'm going to get my fourth and fifth toes and I'm now going to just uh, plant flex that medial aspect to the forefoot. And you can actually take your hand off, you've got some working time to make that nice and smooth and then go back to it. And now it's a case of being patient and waiting for the plaster of Paris to set. Okay, so now we've got um, the caster set nicely. It's nice and firm. What I'm going to do is just give Neely's foot a little shake and then I can just gently tease the plaster cast off. And that's sitting nice and flat on the work surface. So I've corrected the forefoot position nicely and we're ready to go. Um, sending these casts away before they're fully dry can be a problem because they'll crush in the box. Um, so what you want to do is either uh, leave them overnight to dry, maybe on a radiator, or stick them in a microwave for 20 seconds. That hardens them up quite nicely. But obviously don't cook your dinner in there afterwards.